Hi guys, welcome to part 4 of the e-commerce app playlist. In this video we will leave the UI away and we will start to write some actual code. So in this video we will handle the register operation and let's actually do that. Ok so the first thing we wanna do is to have our user data class. So let's go ahead inside our data package and create a new class and call this user. And of course this will be a data class. Now let's think about what each user need to have. Um, first we will have the first name which is a string. Um, we also need the last name which is also a string. We need the email which is a string and we also need the image path uh, image path and initially this will be an empty string because when we register a new account there is no option to the user that he can upload an image the user can add the profile image after the sign up operation so we can make this empty string by default and we change it later of course whenever the user upload a new image now open curly brackets and whenever you want to deal with Firebase services, you need to have your empty constructor because Firebase will use that. So we will make an empty constructor and we will pass empty strings for the values. After that, we need to add the Firebase authentication dependency. For that, click on Tools, click on Firebase, scroll up and you can find this authentication service. Click on it, click on the first one and add the Firebase Authentication SDK and here as you can see it will add a bunch of things uh, these two things it will add in for the first time because we have not added in before but this one is for the authentication service so click on accept changes and wait some time okay now if we go to the Gradle script and we go to the module level Gradle file we can find um, this one as you can see Android Studio has already added this dependency so I'm gonna cut it from here and I'm gonna make a comment for the Firebase for the Firebase dependencies I'm gonna paste it here click on sync now again and to make sure that everything works just click on build and rebuild your project okay now we want to enable the authentication uh, service in our Firebase console and open up your console select your project then extend the build services and you can find the authentication service in here so click on it and now we're gonna enable that so click on get started then as you can see we have a bunch of options uh, what we are interested in is the email and password registration so we can choose that but as you can see there are a lot of other options we have Google, Facebook, Play Games, GitHub Apple, uh, Game Center, Microsoft, Twitter, Yahoo, and we can also register by phone number or anonymous. But as I said, we're gonna register with the email and password. So click on that and let's enable it. Click on save. Okay, now get back to Android Studio. And now we're going to use the MVVM architecture pattern. So if you're not familiar with this pattern, it's just a pattern that divides your project to three layers. The first layer is the view which has the UI components, the second layer is the model which represents the data and the business logic and finally the view model. And we can also use a repository with this and the repository as the name describe it is a repository of the data. So each data source has its own repository. If you have built apps with the MVVM architecture, I think you have used repositories. But in this app it's not necessary because if we use repository with this app we're gonna repeat the code and I don't want that so we're gonna write the business logic directly in the view model and Firebase has a lot of functions that help us to organize our code so let's actually start that and you will see that uh, inside the view model package let's create a new view model and this is for the login register view model create that and I would like to add and the first thing is to annotate this class with health view model and this annotation to tell dagger held that this is a view model class and by the way if you have never used dagger held in your project so what dagger held does is just inject dependencies in your classes and to clarify what that means let me remove this first and let's have a typical view model so as you know in view models we pass the dependencies from the outside 
and what we are going to use in this class is an instance from the Firebase Authentication. So to get that, val Firebase Authentication, which is Firebase Authentication. Now without Dagger Hilt, if you want to get an instance from this view model class, you need first to create a view model provider factory class and inject your dependency, which is this one, from that class to the view model. But with Dagger Hilt, there is no need for that. We can just use this annotation and use one more, which is inject before the constructor and use the constructor keyword. And now Daggerheld will handle the injection of this dependency. But of course we want to tell Daggerheld how to inject this. But not now, we're just gonna do it later. Okay, now let's write our function. So function create account with email and password. And here we're going to pass user, which, is, which type of user then open color brackets now to create a new account with firebase this is very very easy all you need to do is to use the firebase authentication uh, instance then create user with email and password and here you're gonna pass first the email so user.email then you pass the password but we don't have the password inside this class so i'm gonna need to pass it as another parameter password string and this is a password and that's how you create a new account in firebase but we don't know anything about the response so now firebase provides us some cool functions the first one is add on success listener so this will get executed only if the registration was success and we also have set or add on um, on failure listener and this one will get executed when something wrong is happened so now let's have immutable flow to observe that from our fragment so private val register mutable state flow and for the data inside this flow I will create a class for that because we have three states that this call go through the first one is loading uh, success and failure so i would like to organize that inside a generic class let's do that inside our url package create a new class call this sealed class and here call this resource and as i said this class will be a generic class that means it can receive any data type and for the past value we first uh, have our data which is generic and this could be null we have a message which is the error message in case something went wrong and this also could be null now open curly brackets and oops now inside here we're gonna have subclasses the first one is when the operation is success so class success which be a general class and here we'll pass data which is generic and we'll extend from the resource and we will pass our data but this will be a generic as well then we have the error state generic and here we will send the message which is string and we will extend from the resource then we will pass the message so message equals message and we are gonna have the loading state which gonna extend from the resource but this will not send anything and this will be generic like that if this class is confusing don't worry you'll see how we're gonna use this class later and you will see how this class will make everything easy and organized now let's get back to the view model and inside our flow we're gonna have a resource of firebase user so we'll send the firebase user and initially this will be in the loading state now duplicate this line and this will be the public one which gonna be a flow of this and this will equal the register one the private one so inside the success listener we just gonna emit a new value the uh, firebase user and to get that as you can see this lambda function return us 
authentication result. So it dot user. So we got the user in here, but this might be null. So we make an null check. And then we can post or emit our value. Equals resource dot success. And we will send the user. Inside the unfailer listener, we are going to post a value of resource dot error. And now we're going to pass the error message. We can get it from it dot message dot to string. And that's it for this function. Well, we're not done yet. We're going to add some more functionality to this function, but not in this video. Uh, we will add it later, but we are good to go now. Okay, guys, so that was all for this video. I know it's a short video and I'm not active on my channel recently and that is because of my college. Uh, it's taken a lot of time actually and I don't find the time to record YouTube videos. But anyways, I will try my best to record more videos for this playlist especially because this will be a long playlist. Again, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to follow me on my Instagram page, the link is in the description. And hope you have a good day. See you in the next video.